Shalom, shalom, Lember, better Israel, my people, from the homeland of Sene, a seed in Yemen. Shalom to all nations and all children of Lember, better Israel that have been scattered to the four corners of the earth. I should like to speak to you today from my royal courts and live better Israel in Santiago de Chile in South America. I should like to distinguish members of the Royal Executive Council of this kingdom. Uh, first of all, I will distinguish Her Royal Majesty, the Queen Mother of this kingdom, uh, Queen Mother Bukeka Naya Israel Haba. I should like to distinguish uh, also our high co our high priest in this kingdom uh, of Lemberbeta Israel, uh, our high priest uh, Likar Kainat Abune Zion. And I would like to pass my condolences, first of all, before I go on speaking on today's subject, uh, to our Likar Kainet that passed on in the state of Israel, who was the Likar Kainet in Israel, Lever Better Israel community in the modern state of Israel. That was Likar Kainet Hadani. He passed on about a week ago at the age of 97 and we would like to pass our sincere condolences from this court to the community of Lemberbeta Israel in the state of Israel and also to the clan where he belong and the family and the nation and the kingdom at large. We should like to express that he was faithful and honest high priest of our people, even in the most turbulent and the most difficult times of his turbulent journey from Ethiopia to the state of Israel during the operations of the Operation Solomon and Operation Moses uh, that occurred uh, since the, the mid 80s and up to the 1992 Operation Solomon, which was a great success. And all of them have seen uh, Likar Kahenat playing an important role in the leadership of the people of Israel that returned to the state of Israel during the airlifting and the Operations Moses and Operation Solomon. Our sincere condolences to his family as well. I should like to speak today uh, to all children of Israel uh, about certain things that seem to be of great concern uh, within the kingdom and uh, within the, the mass lands that are called Africa today. I was just going on in my program and I was just uh, trying to continue with our daily schedule of the activities that we needed to prioritize to pursue and to make tremendous progress in the kingdom. We are doing a great deal, as I said in the last video, that there is going to be a royal entry of our entrance into South Africa, which is Sinai, where the Lemba people and the Better Israel people in general are concentrated in that country, which is in the southern part of the continent of Africa. So I am bound to make a pause in what I'm doing to address impending issues, to address matters that seem to be arising and causing concern 
that um, if these matters do not be addressed, uh, we can hardly move along. We can hardly make tremendous progress because, or any progress whatsoever, if we do not address these issues. So these issues need to be addressed. They have been outstanding. They have been long-standing and overdue. And so they needed to be addressed. And I have taken my time today to address these issues so that we can clear the mind of everyone listener, everyone out there who has some questions, all the misconceptions to be cleared out so that we do not suffer ignorance or suffer uh, confusion or suffer the inconsistencies in the way issues are being handled or in understanding our environment in a better way, in a more illuminated way. So I will rather address this before I go on so that I can address it quickly and then then I'll get it out of my sight so that uh, it will be not an obstacle at all in whatever we are trying to pursue. The kingdom is growing. Uh, the members, the children of Lemba Beta Israel are rising and they're beginning to know who they are and they are digging out their history and their past and their heritage is becoming more important to them. These are good signs of growth and move forward and go forward as they go forward. Now, I see that there are certain obstacles and that's why I had to come in quickly to try to address that so that uh, we do not have something that stands on our way or something that confuses the mind or that tries to reprogram the mind that was trying to do the revision and the reverse move to get these things out of the minds of the people um, as you know, that there has been so many effects of colonization and uh, brainwashing that has happened to many of our communities in the so-called continent of Africa or in the diaspora as well. So I would like to straighten out these things uh, tonight and to make sure that everyone goes with a clear conscience of what is actually going on what is the real story, what is the narrative, what is the position, what is the truth behind some of the things that we see today. The, my topic for today is about the continent of Africa, uh, rather the name Africa itself. So I will give a title to this session and say that this session is saying, my people, stop calling yourself Africa because you are not from Italy. So this is the, the, uh, the message today that I would like to, to make. That I hear that as we move along and we're trying to make tremendous progress as a people, then comes this disturbing factor that there is one among us called Africa who is disturbing us, who is an obstacle, who is saying that he is the parent of all of us and he is the mother and father of all of us. And then we cannot make progress unless we consult this parent called Africa or we do things that will please this man or woman called Africa who claims parenthood of all children of different kingdoms in a mass of land called Africa today. Now, I would like to first of all say that uh, we are a kingdom of Lemba Better Israel, which is a nation that has um, the tribes inside it, uh, has clans inside it, has families inside it, it has a language within it, has customs and traditions within it. There are um, certain, uh, there is a culture, a very distinct culture within this kingdom or this nation, just as 
it is with other nations that are true nations that uh, have not lost their identity. So I will address the, the factor that is coming in, which is negatively affecting us just as much as it affects other kingdoms or nations. So the most important thing about a nation is the birth. Someone has to be born to a, a father of, or a mother in order to have a nation coming out of that. Yeah, so I will talk about birth as the fundamental thing about identifying somebody to be belonging to a certain nation, to have a certain identity as a person coming from certain birth. He is born of somebody, born of somebody, a mother, a woman, a man. And so I would like to emphasize on that point because it seems like many people are forgetting that this is the fundamental thing about who you are. It's actually who you're born of. So I will address this issue today of this dogma that has been going on around uh, the so-called continent of Africa and the people calling themselves Africans from the continent called Africa, um, which is not the reality on the ground. Yeah, so uh, I would like to establish uh, a very strong point on these things. Then I have a hypothesis, a very scientific one, a scientific thesis to prove these things I'm going to say that I'm going to try to, I'm going to make a big and tremendous move into dismissing this dogma of Africa and Africanism and Pan-Africanism, whatever you want to call it, and this continent dogma and this republic of this republic of that dogma, so that I can blow that to pieces with the thesis I'm going to bring in, which is a scientific one. The reason I'm saying this is because my people and my kingdom are, are also included in this little trap called Africa and this mistaken identity called Africa. That someone is an African as an identity. That any identity, whatever it is that comes upon that person is beaten by this superior one called Africa. So I want to blow that to pieces. That such an identity does not even exist. So what I will do is I say that we are disturbed as a kingdom. We are a very separate entity. We are a very particular and very specific nation called Lembabeta Israel. We are not a continent here. We are not African continent. We are not southern, con southern part of continent of Africa. We are not eastern part of the continent of Africa. We are none of these denominations. So we are a kingdom that comes out of a birth of somebody who gives birth to descendants and offspring that will be identified by the birth from that person. Yes, a long time ago we had an ancestor, we had a mother, we had a father, even today, that we identify with. Yes, and the kingdoms have been there as unities and as leaderships of each nation that was born born of somebody and therefore as part of these nations we are so there's so many nations in so-called african continent so they are actually numbering in thousands not hundreds thousands and each one of these kingdoms has a king who is born from a mother and a father of that particular nation and that gives that person an identity and the followers of that person identify with this dynasty of someone born among them who was a leader, who was a king, who was also born of a king of that particular area. They speak their own language, they have their own culture, they have their own customs, traditions, they have their way of dressing, they have their way of eating, they have their way of walking, they have their way of singing distinct, particular to that particular nation. Yes, this nation is not Africa. Yes, 
it is a nation, for example. It could be the Amahara, it could be the Romo, it could be uh, the Zulu nation with the Zulu king who was born within that, that nation. Yes. Birth. Yes. And so uh, after that, we understand that these are associating themselves with certain cultures and customs which are born out of them. And so we are going to emphasize this because I want to make it clear that none of us are falling into this trap. And those of you who have fallen into the trap or the dogma of Africa, you better get out because it's a setback. I would advise that you get out of this dogma of being an African and not being who you really are. So this Africa is a, it's a colonial invention and it's a colonial name and it's an Italian name that has nothing to do with the people that are calling themselves Africans today. I heard um, on Facebook, I have posted on social media um, about uh, the fact that the people should not fall into an identity that is so obscure like this. They call themselves Africa when they are not from Italy because Africa is someone that I found that I know is from that country because that word is in a language of the Italian language. Yes, it's in the Italian language to say Africa. Yes, I do not speak Italian as my language. I can learn Italian and speak it, but it's not the language of my mother or my father. I did not suck this language on the breast of my mother called Africa, because it's from Italy. But someone from Italy will relate and it will resonate well with that person from Italy because Africa is an Italian word. Yes. If you don't believe me, just visit one of your Italian friends and say to him or her, Hello, my friend. Can I ask you something? Uh, when you say Africa in your language in Italy, what do you mean by that? Interesting, friendly question. Not to fight against that, now open the argument. Just say to, to, to the Italian friend of yours, tell me, what is the meaning of this word? I heard this word spoken somewhere else and I, it was not in Italy. And I, it was so common in that part of the world. And I wondered what it meant because you are from Italy and I understand this word is an Italian word. What does it mean? What is the meaning of the word Africa? I hear this word spoken so much. Yes. Okay, we come back to the truth. The truth is the people who are called Africans today are not Africans. They are something else. They belong to certain kingdoms, which I, when I started off, I said those kingdoms, they are numbering thousands, not hundreds, thousands, they could go up to 3,000 of them in this vast land that was named Africa by the colonizer. You know, so as this mass land on earth, real solid land, not islands, not separate little pieces of things, real ground, real soil, real earth. That's where Africa, the so-called Africa, is located today. Something called Africa is a mass land that is not necessarily, it's not an island, it's not water, it is the real earth. <laughs> yeah, so because of that, uh, they came across this mass of land, the colonizers from Europe, and said, this mass land, as big as it is, is called Africa. And we want to take it for ourselves because we find that so many resources on this land 
minerals on this land. Lots of riches of nature can be found on this mass land that now, from now on, we are going to call Africa. We call it Africa because Africa in our language is a great name. Something that we value, that we care about so much. Something we like so much. We cherish something that we found somewhere in the world. A solid mass of land with everything in it. It's called Africa. Our most valuable, you know, object. A mass land. For us, we are taking it, it's ours now. Yes. So when they did this, they scrambled over it. So one European country said, this is mine. My, my, my lump sum of, my lump chunk of earth belongs to me. And the other European country said, no, it belongs to me too. So they scrambled for it. Because it's so valuable. It's so great. It has everything they need. If they, if they want diamond, they find diamond in it. If they want gold, they find gold in this mass land, this chunk of the earth. And so therefore, they would fight for it. And after fighting for it, they said, it is not getting us nowhere. It's not manageable as a big chunk like this. You can't manage this. You have to break it down. Break it down so that it can be more manageable, which makes sense to me. Very smart. If you try to take it as a whole and try to drive it, it doesn't move. So, but if we split it up into small bits and pieces, assimilated bits, we can manage it. I agree. If I were them, I would do the same. It's difficult to manage this thing. I'll cut it up. Break it up. Into portions. Yeah. They did that so they could stop fighting over this chunk. Then the other said, I'll take this piece. Or I'll take two pieces of this part of this junk. The other person took three. The other one took four. So everyone had a slot until they were all covered up properly. And so they could take from the lands, broken down into smaller pieces, and use that as their fundamental resource and source of wealth for themselves. So they would take away from this and go and build their civilizations in Europe. Yes. Now the question is, who did they find on this mass land called Africa? And who did they find when they split it up into pieces and things? They found kingdoms. These kingdoms could be Lembe, could be Zulu, could be could be Baluba, could be could be Oromo. It could be Amhara, it could be any one of these kingdoms. So these kingdoms and these nations have their own social structures and their own civilization. But when the colonizers came, they undermined all these civilizations and fought a war to overcome the civilizations and the kingdoms and the authorities and the leadership structures that were within these kingdoms or these nations, which had a birth and an identity, very clear identity. They spoke their language. They didn't speak a language called African language. They didn't. Because such a language does not exist. So there are land mass, of which contains thousands and thousands of kingdoms, was given a nickname called Africa. The people that lived on this mass land that was later called Africa, did not have an idea of taking the whole lump of the earth around them to make it one thing, to give it one name. That did not exist. In other words, 
There is nothing like continent in the cultures of these structures of society, these uh, kingdoms and these nations. There is nothing like continent in their mind and there is nothing called continent in their civilization and there is nothing called continent in their geography and astronomy. It doesn't exist. So they cannot say, we used to be a continent that was not called Africa, was called something else, and somebody changed the name of our continent. No, impossible, because they did not have something called a continent at all. Not to mention what its name should have been. There was no such thing as continent within the social structures that I've just told you about. The kingdoms that I've just told you about. The kingdom of the Zulu does not have anything called continent in their social structure. It doesn't exist. So they will not even talk about what their continent used to be called. Because a continent never existed within these thousands and thousands of kingdoms that were actually occupying this mass land of the earth, the real earth, that was later nicknamed Africa by the colonizer, not by the original people of that mass land. Yeah. So it was a new formation and a new structure and an aggressive move to take away from the kingdoms whatever belonged to them. So not only was the resources taken and the wealth taken and the looting and the pillage and the, and the spoil of, from the land mass, it was also the invalidation of their social structures and to disband kingdoms. To defeat each kingdom and to bring down and to topple each king to bring him down so that these structures do not threaten the new formation and the new order which is called continent of Africa. Even their, their spirituality was different from the spirituality that they had when they which they later had when they were now called a, con a continent or they were called Africa or whatever it is or even the Republic of something which is a subdivision from continent to, to republic of something, republic of South Africa, republic of Zimbabwe, republic of that, republic of that, which are just subdivisions of what was called the continent before, not by the people from there, but by someone from outside who was interested in this mass land to take it from the people that originally belonged there. Yeah. So in other words, there was no continent, it was kingdoms. And these kingdoms were given the name according to the language of each kingdom of the nation, which I said in the beginning is the birth of a person. Yes. And after that, this was, the whole structure was destroyed. How was that destroyed, the kingdoms destroyed by the colonizers to form a continent and later to form a republic? Was by war, by aggression, by taking by force what belonged to these kingdoms. And to disband the formation and the structures of these kingdoms so that they did not exist. So the kingdoms are not even remembered because that was the idea in the first place to disband the administration behind the social structures so that there will be no one to administer any order in this particular area was to defeat the kings, the kingdoms, the leadership, the administration to bring it down. So if the people follow the king, they'll topple him, the king. And then when they topple him, the king, the people will be scattered and destroyed because the people will look into their king for everything as a symbol of unification and as a symbol of peace and stability. That was the culture of each one of these nations that they revered their leadership, who was born 
within them. The leader was not a foreigner, was not a tourist, was born of these people. Yes. And so therefore, my people, this is disturbing us while we're trying to move on as a kingdom. I don't know about the other kingdoms if they're not disturbed, but I am disturbed. And I want to protect my own from this confusion and from this dogma. If you don't see this as a threat to your development and your progress, then you must be missing something. There's something you're missing. You don't know what you're missing. Yes. Because this is true, a true obstacle to the progress of people called Africa today, of which I'm included. And I'm saying, let us be free of this man or this woman called Africa who is holding us and got us trapped under his wing or her wing so that we are not going back to who we really are. We are no longer the Zulu. We are no longer the Romo. We are no longer the Mahara. We despise all this. We dismiss this as or tribes that are dividing us. We want democracy. So the colonizer has taught our people to insult their own identity. They're calling it divisive, divisive tribes. Those things that are called tribes, they're actually nations, they're kingdoms that were destroyed by the colonizer. In a war. So let me tell you what the nature of war is. When you are fighting in a war, you have to be in contrast with your enemy. You hate your enemy. And you use hate and contrast and argument and agitation as a motivation. Yeah. If you are not filled with these things I've just mentioned now, which are very, very sad, and to contradict the enemy, then the war will not be successful. If you are trying to make friends with someone you are fighting with, in the middle of the battlefield is irrelevant. Because any time you show a weakness that you really cannot fight, because he will drag you into war to fight with you. He'll poke you on the nose with an umbrella, with a stick, to make you fight. He will touch your hair so that you can get angry. And now you have no option but you have to fight. So war does not ask for your permission to happen. That's war. If I say I don't want to fight, oh, fighting is a bad thing. War is a bad thing. That is retreat, defeat. The enemy wins. I may be right that war is not a good thing, so I'm trying to avoid it. Okay, the moment I try to say that, this is called retreated forces, defeated forces that are now retreating. Yes. So they came as aggressors and as warriors to fight against nations in the smart land of Africa until they defeated them. And when they defeated them, they could establish their own thing. So in order for the kingdoms to come back to their original position, they have to fight another war against the colonizers and be determined to win it this time. Hoping that they will win it. It's not guaranteed. They have to show more strength, more power, so that the colonizer can be removed and they can win this time and they remove the colonizer completely from their territories. This will be victory to them, but they have to fight for the victory because it is the, the way of the engagement of war. War does not respect whether you are the owner of the territory or not. War is about whether you win or you lose. This is a war. This is the nature of war. So I cannot if I fight with you and I come to occupy your land by force, which is war, aggression, 
I cannot let myself be defeated because I am wrong. Because I am, I, I am, I am invading your lands. No. War does not do work like that. I have to fight to win or to lose. I live or I die in the war. So I am not expecting someone to feel sorry for me. If I expect that to happen, it means I'm defeated. I'm surrendering. I have lost to this person. It doesn't show how good I am. That everybody should stand with a good man. That's not war. It's misunderstanding of war. Yeah. And so, I often hear people say, Oh, why did they they come and invade us? They should have, they should have retreated. Well, they do not retreat on their own. You force them to do so because you have to win. You know. <laughs> They can't let themselves be killed and say, we are going to allow ourselves to be killed in this war because we are wrong. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Doesn't work like that. Yes. Even if I don't want to fight, I don't want to share blood, but I'm going to be forced by the engagements of war to be on the battlefield to win or to lose. This is what our ancestors were confronted with. And it was quite a dilemma because they say maybe if I fight it's a bad thing because someone is going to die in this thing. Yes, someone has to die and this is not an option anymore. Yeah. And so this is what happened. So when they were defeated in battle, the one who had won the battle controlled the region. And then he decided to split it up into republics. So when he splits up into republics, he can split it the way, anyhow, the way he wants to split it up. He does not take into consideration that, okay, the area that I'm trying to split, it belongs to a certain kingdom, and then I cannot divide the people of the kingdom here. Because then it means they will, their relatives will be on the other side of another country, republic or something. And then this will not be fair. No, they don't care about this because they have won the war and the people who are in there are almost like prisoners of war. They have no voice because they lost the battle. Yes. So if they want to win, they have to fight another war and hope to win. They will have to employ new strategies now. You see, we had, there was a strategy that we should have employed, but we didn't employ it. That's why we lost. Or maybe we should bring it in. That strategy. Okay, that tactic. I'm, I'm a new tactician now. I, I want to bring new tactics for, for fighting this war. And I want to make sure that this time we do not lose. This is the only way to go. But the people don't understand this engagement. They say, I'm going to sit down on the table. I'm going to negotiate that they should not do that. They should not occupy the land. They should not take the gold. They should not do that. I'm going to negotiate that in a democracy that they should not take the resources anymore. They should give it to me because, you know, I am the original person here. I, I come from here. So... I, when we have a meeting of the negotiations tomorrow, I am going to ask them to to consider that they don't come from here originally, so they should give up some of the, the stuff they have. Mm. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Once you do that, you are inferior, servant, slave, just making requests in a desperate situation that they should give you something of what is left over from their table. The crumbs of bread that fall under the table. That's what you're asking for. You cannot be given the real product. You cannot be given the real food. Because it's not yours anymore. Because you lost the war. 
They were wrong, yes, of course, they should not come to take from you what belongs to you. But you had no power to stop them from taking from you, and you lost the war, so they do as they please. So if you move to a democratic dispensation and then you involve the United Nations and everyone else, it doesn't make that much difference because it's all about accommodating these people and allowing them to continue to, to control your resources and to manage them to see how much of that they can give you as a little sympathy. Yes, that we feel so bad about him, even though we defeated him. Well, look at him, he's so sad. Look at his face, he's so sad. Just give him a little bit, please. Yeah. So the continent of Africa is not your identity. The word Africa is not your identity. The formation and the structure of something called Africa has got nothing to do with you. Stop carrying out the dogma and moving the dogma and feeling that those rocks of obstacles on your way called Africa without now not being able to move on. Yes. Identify yourself first. Get back to Zulu, to Tosa, to Romo, and have your king leading you in those particular sections. And then you cooperate with your neighbors according to your culture of that particular nation, which I said came out of birth. You were born. That's what makes you who you are. You're born of this person. Yeah. And then when you are Romo, you are Lemba, you are Zulu, your identity will be clear. You will have a Zulu king if you are a Zulu. If you are Lemba, you have a Lemba king who was born in your in your in your in your nation, in your society, you know who it is, and they keep on getting they inherit the kingdom and the leadership is inherent. And then you have the other nation. So all these nations must get back to that form and dissolve this continent republic, both of them, and stop that and dissipate these formations of the colonizer. So now I hear that around the world that uh, the African Union it should not have been called Africa. It should not have been African Union in the first place because it should have been what the kingdoms, as they get together, think about a certain unifying force. Yes. And the African Union is saying, we are so unhappy that the colonizer has divided the continent into republics. And this is very bad because it makes us weaker, because as a small republic, we cannot box with the world economic powers that are submerging us, that are oppressing us. Okay. But if you are split up into republics, it bothers you. But it doesn't bother you that in the first place, there is something called continent, which is also not your thing, and that doesn't bother you. It only bothers you that the continent has been divided into small portions. But the source of all these things, it doesn't bother you. <laughs> so the continent is yours. It's your identity. But the, the republics that are coming from the continent are not your identity. <laughs> it's impossible. If you don't like the subdivision, which is the Republic, you shouldn't like the continent. In fact, you should start with the continent and let that be blown away that we are not the continent. I am a Zulu. I come from the Zulu nation. I speak Zulu language, for example. I am Lemba. I speak Lemba language, which is Gaze. This is not Zulu. But if I want to live in harmony with my Zulu neighbor, my culture as a Lemba, my custom as a Lemba, spells this out. It tells me how to relate to my neighbor who is a Zulu. It is not the continent that tells me this. 
It's not the Republic that tells me this. How do I relate with my neighbors who are Zulu, who are Tosa, who are not Lemba? My people, you are listening to King Binyam, Binyam Solomon, Solomon of Lemba, Better Israel speaking. Just to let you know who is speaking to you today. I'm one of the kingdoms that were destroyed in the so-called African continent, split into what you call Republic of South Africa, Republic of this, Republic of this, and we've been affected. And then we cannot move forward because of these kind of formations and these structures that have been imposed on us. But first of all, we have to talk about the imposition, the, the structure that was first imposed, which is the biggest primary factor here is the continent. This is where the problem began. We cannot deal with the problems if we don't go to the root of where the problem started. The problem is the continent, yes, which does not ex exist in all these kingdoms that I just mentioned. Yes. So it's not only the name Africa which is bad, but it's the structure, the nature of the structure of something called continent that really bothers me a lot. So I have to use the word Africa so that you could understand that even the word is not from your language. You know. The Italians said, we're calling it Africa because it's of great value to us. This must land. Not you! You didn't say that it is it is Africa where you are at. You didn't. Because why you are not you are you are not Africa? Because you're not from Italy. <laughs> you know. Unless if there is an Italian visitor who came to your home and you showed them hospitality, and then you said, I will use the name of my visitor to give it to one of my children because I will have memories of this good neighbor who came to visit me from Italy. Yeah. In that sense, then I will understand, okay, this is not the wor a word from your culture, but you you had a visitor from Italy to your in, come into your home and you showed him hospitality. And then you named one of your children Africa because you remembered your visitor. Yes. I heard someone even say that the word Africa comes from Afar. Afar is the name of a nation. You know? Afar does not mean Africa. No, it doesn't. The word Afar means the earth, the dust, or the wilderness. It talks about how solid the earth or the place where these people lived. It is very identical to what we would call a, a big mass of land, which is not an island. It's not submerged in water. It's the real solid ground. That's what afar means. Another word that means solid ground, the real ground, not these areas where there is water all over the place and the whole place is submerged in water and there are islands and pieces of things. It's called dudalem. Dudalem. Yeah, so before everybody was called before every, the people were colonized and defeated in battle, which I explained the nature of battle and war, that it, it doesn't take into consideration your wishes and your ambitions. It disrupts completely your plans. Your order is, is just dismantled. And because of that, the engagement of war, you lost. And the only way to win is to fight another war. And this time, you have to win it. So, now, the question is, why did these nations get defeated so easily? And then why wouldn't they come back to their senses now, in this modern age, to say that 
Our ancestors who came before us were not too sophisticated to deal with this because or they did not have such military power to overcome this thing. Or they did not have the new idea in the new era, in the new age religion, ideas and ideologies that could bring things back to normal. But we assume to have that. Some of us are very smart. We, 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 we're able to use computers. We're able to be smart, you know, with technology and everything else. And we also can manufacture even those machine guns that were used against our ancestors. So my question is, during the time when the colonizers came in, the so-called African people were a little more developed. Yes, and they, they had some consciousness that they could take back what belongs to them. And even now, as I speak in 220, the so-called African people, which is not their identity, it is something that has been given to them to be called African because they're not called African. They are Zulus, they are Tosas, they are Lemba, they are Mahara, they are Oromo, they are not African. So, if this is the case, why wouldn't the Africans take back what belongs to them and tell the colonizer to pack his bags and leave? The word Africa, I am, um, I understand it very clearly that even though I may not be perfect in, in defining what it means as the original Italians do, I'm not going to try to assume that position of, a, of an original Italian person. The, the Italians will know the meaning of this word better than I. Yes. And so I'm not going to assume the position of knowledge of a, of, the, of, a, of a word in another language of another person. I know my own better than I can know someone else. Yes. And so I will say, I am teaching here, I am working, I am a businessman here in Chile, apart from my leadership of the, of the kingdom. And uh, I been lecturing in the universities here in Chile um, in communication technology and I come across students yes uh, different students some of the students I have are from Italy some are Spanish because this is a Spanish country where I live I speak Spanish very fluently yes and the Spanish language and the Italian language are very similar because uh, in most cases, in some cases, they share the Latin root. Yes. And so some words like Africa will look the same in Spanish as they are in Italian. Yeah. Then one of my students was called Africa and she was a woman. A young lady. She was called Africa in my class. As a lecturer in an institute, in an university. Lecturer in communication. And that student of mine was called Africa. And I called her closer. And there were some lecturers. There was one lecturer from, from Nigeria who was also there to be a witness. And I said, call the lady, the young lady again, just to confirm that truly her name is Africa. And then we called her and then we said, is it true that your name is Africa? He said, yes. And what nationality are you? I'm Italian. I'm an Italian Spanish girl. Thank you, my dear friend. Go in peace. My dear friend, Africa. In other words, it is very clear from this, in my knowledge also of the two languages, Spanish and Italian, that actually uh, if you have the conjugation of like an A or a CA at the end of that, it suggests the female. So we have names that are either female or masculine. Yeah, so if Africa has that conjugation, it means it is the name for a woman, it's not for a man. If it's a man, he will be called Africo. Africo. But then because uh, it was now that 
it came down to the another conjugation where you have to mention this person as if it's an identity of the person, like, where do you come from? I come from Africa, so you are an African. I come from America, so I'm an American. I come from South Africa, so I'm a South African. I come from Ethiopia, so I'm an Ethiopian. So, if that is the case, then we can do the same with the name Africa. So, for the lady, we will say you are an African. And then when you speak in Spanish and Italian, we say Afri Africana. Africana and Africa are all referring to a woman. Yes. Whatever the meaning of that is in Italia, I do not know very well. But I know that the conjugation making it Africana and Africa is only for a woman, for a female, not for a man. Yes. Africano, it is a man because of the conjugation that I've just mentioned. Africano, not Africana. And then... After that, we have um, Negro, which is also confused to be an identity of somebody. The people go on saying, I am black. There is no nationality called black. It doesn't exist. As I told you, the nationalities are, for example, Zulu, you know, Luo, Amahara, uh, Oromo, Tigre, yes, not black. There's no such name of a, of a nation by that name. So if someone says, I'm, I am black, I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know what they're talking about. So the word black in, Sp in Spanish and also in Italian is negro. Negro. Not negro. Eh, negro. Okay. Negro means black color. The color of something is negro is black. The translation in English is black color. Color. Color negro. Black color. Is not the name of a race of people. It's not. It's literally not. Yes. To call people black or, 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 or negro is derogatory. It's racism. Mm. Because the black person or the white person does not exist. There is no nation or identity called that. It does not exist. I don't know where they're getting it from. And even the people who are called white today, I don't know where they are called white because they are not white. Yeah. I have checked the color white and I have checked their faces and the color of their skin is not white at all. So I don't know where they're getting white from to identify themselves as white from what? I have looked at their color and I have checked against the color white. They don't look like it. So where do they get white from? Where do they get it from? And they told me that I'm black. I said, me? <laughs> I took a black color of something and I compared with my skin. It don't look the same. So I don't know. If these people are saying, I am black, what are they talking about? I don't mind if I had that color on my skin. I wouldn't mind being called having a black a black skin. But, but I don't see that skin. I haven't seen that in any part of the world. Anyone of that color. I haven't seen that person. And the white, I haven't seen any white person in my life ever since I was born. I lived in Europe where the people are, 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 so, are called white people. I didn't see them. They did not look white at all. I don't know where the white color is coming from, you know. I don't understand it. <laughs> are the people crazy with colors? Are they colorblind? 
do they don't know the difference between colors? Or should we run a class here about color so that the people can learn colors, like back in school or kindergarten or something? So they can tell what really black is and what really white is. <laughs> so some people say, when you say Negro, they get upset that you are saying you are speaking racism. But when you use the English word black, they say, there's nothing wrong, I'm black. Are you Negro? No, I'm not Negro, I'm black. It's the same way the translation. In Spanish, Negro means black color of something. Yes. In English, it's black. So in Spanish, it's Negro. It's the same. So if you, if you don't want to be called Negro, you must not want to be called black either. Because it's the same thing. Because black is the color of something. It's not your race. This is racism. Yes. And so, now Africa, you must put that away. No, Africa. You are, your identity comes from your people, where you were born. I was born of Lambert parents. Yes. I did not know that I was black, and I did not know I was African, until I went to a colonial school. Then I heard the first time that I am African. The first time. This is the hypothesis now. Now this is a real life experience. I am, I was called Africa by someone else, not my mother, not my father. If I had been really Africa and I had been black, which is not an identity, but I hear people saying the identity is black, then I would have been told by my mother. I would have seen my black on the mirror. We had a mirror at home. I would have seen the color and I would not have any objection. Yeah. No. I would not have any objection whatsoever. It's out of question. If, if that was the color of my skin, I would have seen it a long time ago. <laughs> and if the if the Europeans that came to my to my town, if they had been white, I would have no known that they are white. I was very good at colors in school. Yeah, when I got to the school, I had the, in the books. I was reading some books that were coming from England, and the, the book said that I am African. And then my teacher said that I'm African. Then I said, who is that? I don't know that person. Who is this person? I don't know that person. Who is it? I don't know him. Africa. I don't know him. My mother never told me about that. <laughs> and so, it is this African dogma and this continent dogma that is letting our people astray, that's leading our people astray. And we cannot make tremendous progress, my, my kingdom included. We cannot make tremendous improvement because of the obstacle called continent identity, which never existed in our kingdoms, which were the beginning of our identity in the languages that we had from our mother and father. Yes. So I am appealing to everyone else to go back to this and get the power. In Eastern philosophies, they say, your self-realization of realizing your identity is more powerful civilization. It's a greater civilization than building a skyscraper. It's how much you have realized yourself and how much you know of yourself that civilizes you. Not, not to compare to building a skyscraper or to assembly a new car. That civilization is lower than the civilization of knowing yourself. That's where your power is coming from. That's why I had to stop what I'm doing 
and talk about who you are and who you are not. So that we can come square with that, then we can make tremendous progress because we will remove the obstacle of not being identified properly. Yes. I have heard so many Pan-Africanists yes, speaking about the development of the kingdoms that were robbed of their position by the colonizers. Now they are now called African continent, now they are called Republic of that. Yes. And these Pan-Africanists are saying, we are Africa, please. Don't say we are Republic of South Africa, Republic of Zimbabwe, Republic of da 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 da. You're Africa? Did you invent that? So you are reinventing the wheel. The, 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 colonial, the colonialist invented a wheel called Africa and you are reinventing the same wheel. And you're calling this your thing. And you can't move forward because it's not your thing. This is the thing that stopped you from moving on. And you are still following it and holding it and cherishing it. That's your Africa. You're even insulting your, your Zulu identity, your, your, your Shona identity, your, your Ndebele identity, your Oromo identity is insulted because you're saying that Africa is taking the place of all these things. All these things are little divisions of tribes and they're not helping you. Yes. But in Zulu culture, in Lemba culture, there are customs that if you have a neighbor of another nation, how should you relate to them? Yes. You shouldn't kill that man from another tribe. Because according to our custom, you should not commit murder in that form. Please do not steal from the nation next door. Because in our custom, is this not allowed? In our Zulu custom, it's not allowed. In our Lemba custom, it's not allowed. In our Oromo custom, it's not allowed. So these things will bring peace between us and our neighbors, our own social structures, not the continent of Africa. Yeah. The continent of Africa does not have a custom. It doesn't have a language. It, it, it doesn't have anyone. It doesn't have persons. It's just an artificial, fictitious name given to a mass land that has no particular identity of who is living in it. It's just taken as a mass, as a big thing and put together into one thing. And even the people who tried to put it together as one thing failed. They were fighting among themselves. So they had to divide it up again. So now the people who have been colonized, they are in republics now, Republic of this, Republic of this, Republic of this, Republic. Now they say that the real nations, Zulu, Debele, Shona, and other, are now little tribes of the Republic. Ah, so the Republic now is a nation, a colonial structure from the continent, subdivision, is now the nation. The real nation is the tribe under the, the nation which is a republic and is disturbing and dividing the republic and also dividing the continent. So you throw it away. Your own identity is dividing according to where you've been brainwashed that your identity, excuse me, as a Zulu, as these things, is the one that is making you fail to unite with your friend. or with your brothers, your African brothers. So Africa is the one that you are, that you want to be. Something created by the colonizer called Africa, you love it. So if you don't like what the colonizer has invented, you have to dismiss it all. Yes. And then fight a new fight and get the colonizers out of your territory. Yes. Since the continent of Africa, where you are, where your kingdoms were located before, they have everything that the colonizer wants 
for him to build his own civilization in Europe. So sanction the colonizers to completely and get them out of the, of the so-called continent of Africa. Chase them out, kick them out, and sanction them. Yeah. So if they try to fight, well, use your custom, your tradition, your spirituality, your mediums. Make magic that will make them loose in the war and trying to, to resist you because they will not go without resistance. So they will say, no, don't remove me. If you remove me, it's against the United Nations. You say, okay, if you speak like that, I will use my magic. In my custom, I have this magic of getting rid of the people I don't want. In my, in my tradition, I have this power, this spiritual thing called da-da-da-da, which removes those that are trying to hurt me. Yeah. You don't have this because you come from another nation. I don't know what your ancestors are all about. But mine are powerful. If I, if I say to them, this man is trying to get rid of taking my things by force. Please, can you engage your powers, please, to remove this man? Yeah. Remove him. And when that has happened, then you can say, okay, I take back what belongs to me. And my king is this man. Who was born of that man? Who was a king before him? And he protects my culture, my custom, my language, everything. So I have no reason to fight with my brother because all our heritage has been protected. And this man who is the leader, who is born of my society, is the custodian of all this rich heritage of mine. So I have no reason to rape a woman. I have no reason to rob my brother in the house, get into break into his house and steal something from him. I have no reason to do all these things. I have no reason to be corrupt. I have no reason to 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 create uh, I mean a state of emergency like I just spread disease or I rape women, I, I do that, I traffic children. No. There is no reason to do these things because my heritage is protected. How do I deal with another nation? My culture says I must be nice. I must show mercy. My culture, my custom says as a Zulu man, as a Lemba man, that I must not kill other people. I must make friends with them. I must be nice to them. That's why I'm not doing it. No one called Africa has told me this. I know it from my Zulu, my Lemba, my Kosa, my Tsonga culture that I must not do that. Even the king of the Lemba and the king of the Swati and the king of the Zulu have gotten together to form a little committee that talks about cooperation in the region. Yes. And then the Zulus have gold and I have silver. So I have to exchange with them. We are doing very well. Yes. If a Zulu man wants to kill my child, then he will say, oh, first of all, I'm afraid that I will not be welcome at home because at home they say that a Zulu man must not do such a thing. In our custom, uh, my king will be very unhappy with this. Yes. I'm going to stop doing this. So, then, if this thing is brought back to what it should be, there will be peace and there will be progress. So, my people in the so-called continent of Africa, stop saying that you are Africa, that you want to bring Africa back and reinvent the colonial will. Go back to the kingdoms, to the mediums, to the magic, to the tradition, to the power, to the custodianship of your heritage which lies with your king, who was born within your people, who speaks your language. Yeah, You will have peace and stability. Yes. The king of the Swati people is keeping this. He's one of the few that 
have woken up to the truth. He is a model now for all of us. The man speaks his language. He practices his, his culture. It's the kingdom of, of, of Eswatini, not Swaziland. No such things. He stopped that. He said, this is the land of my fathers. My culture as a Swazi man is this and this and this and this. My language is this and this and this and this. I am not Africa. I am not Republic. I am not Swaziland. He said that. There is peace and stability in that particular kingdom. He celebrated 50 years of peace and stability in the kingdom of Eswatini. It's a living example. He's not a republic. He's not Africa. No. He is Swazi, king of Eswatini kingdom. Yeah. This is what he should be. He should go back to this. Yeah. So I hear that uh, Zimbabwe, <laughs> this is terrible. Zimbabwe, land was taken by the colonizers at one time. They colonized it. They came, first of all came a, man, a young man called Rhodes. A young man against the whole men and women of Zimbabwe and took their resources and even named the country after his name, Rhodesia. You are asking yourself, why will this beautiful and intelligent man of, of Shona, Debele, Karanga stop this British boy from taking their resources? The reason they couldn't do it is because the kingdoms were already destroyed. So what was available was only the president who could be the president of that particular republic, which is a formation of the colonizers. So the colonizers can choose an agent. The agent is called a president. Because in the culture of the Shona, the, the, the Ndebele, who belong to that area called the Republic of Zimbabwe or the Karanga, there is no such thing as president of the Republic of. All this is formation by the colonizer. So the colonizer forms a thing called, an institution called Republic of Zimbabwe. And then he appoints an agent. It's not only Zimbabwe, all the called so-called republics are doing the same thing. Yeah, I'm just using Zimbabwe as an example. So, it, then he appoints an agent called president because it's his formation to have a republic, not the formation of the Shona and the Karanga or the, or the Ndebele. No. Who are the right people there? The kingdoms. The, I'm talking about kingdoms here. Yeah. So, the, the, the colonizer forms Zimbabwe. And then he appoints somebody from, first of all, they appointed one of their own person to become an agent in that particular part of the world so they can harvest all resources from there through this person as a, like a little depot there, over there, an agency, a little branch. And so they say, then they decided, the people were rising up and causing trouble, and they said, now it should be one of the Zimbabwean people, which is also not one of the Zimbabwean people as such, it is to be someone from one of the kingdoms that occupy that place. <laughs> The kingdoms are not called Zimbabwe. No. They are Shona, they are Karanga, they are, they are Ndebele, they are these things. Yeah. The Rosui, they are whatever. They are these things. They are Lemba, also in Zimbabwe. It's not the Republic of Zimbabwe. It's kingdoms. There could be four or more. Yeah. In that particular area called Republic of. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, then the colonizer formed something called a republic. First he formed a continent, then he subdivided into republic. All these two things are not the people's creation. And then he chooses an agent called president. Yeah. To represent his interest there. 
The people are, are fooled to believe that they are democracy. They're choosing a president, so it's fair. It's a fair play, you know. We choose the man we want. It's not a dictator. Oh. Mm -mm. They're not choosing nobody. <laughs> In their culture, they don't choose. The person has to be born. <laughs> and so, the colonizer makes them believe that they are choosing a man of their choice. But this is not the case. The colonizer went on a hunt for an agent who will be loyal to the colonial powers and convinced the people that he is one of the Zimbabweans and they should trust him. And then he will engineer his things through this man and the people will be happy that one of their own men is the leader and they have chosen him in a democratic election. And so after that, the people don't know, don't remember that. They have forgotten that this call, this thing called democracy is not part of their culture, no matter how beautiful they think democracy is. What matters here of relevance is that it is not their culture, so they have no reason to embrace it, no matter how good it may sound. Yes. So they should say, no, we are not choosing anyone. We have a son born of our Shona people here who should be a king after his father. Thank you. We are not looking for the president of Zimbabwe. We are having our king of the Shona in this particular section here. But in the other section, there is another nation by this name called Ndebele, or whatever name they are, who will be, uh, who is a kingdom next to us. And we live in peace. And they have their son who was born of such and such a man by that name, in that language, who was a king before his son. And his son is now 22 years old, 23 years old. He can take over. Not the president. Who is this person? <laughs> hey. oh. So, then the agencies is the president. The president is the agent. How they want to get in into Zimbabwe or into South Africa, they go to the president of South Africa. They get whatever they want through their agent. So what South Africa or Zimbabwe is doing or any other republic is doing, they are not even trading with the world. No, the colonizer is delivering Christmas gifts back home in England. It's not a trade between the Republic in Africa with the world whatsoever. It's not a transaction. It's only shipping of gifts back home to Europe. That's what it is. So if the agent does not represent the interest of the colonizer, the colonizers, not the people, will threaten to change him. Gentlemen, what is it that you, what is your problem? Because we've taken care of all your needs. All your children have been taken to University of London to get their high, first rate education in the world. We have given you a nice place to live. You have everything inside this air condition. We provide furniture, we provide everything. We give you a salary. What is your problem? If you continue causing problems for us, we will appoint your brother to take your place, not you anymore. Are you serious or not? Yes, I'm serious. Okay, if you're serious, please do the right thing. Do the right thing. Your brother is waiting to be appointed here because he is suffering. His children are not going to school in the University of London. And they, they don't have, they hardly have enough in their house. And you are playing around with this position. This opportunity will never come back again. Only once in your life. They tell him this. And he says, okay, you are right. Perhaps you are right. I'll do that. I'll tell the people that I'm a representative. Yes. 
So what should have happened is this. As soon as they see, as soon as they, it comes to their senses now, they should say to the colonizer, the colonizer, the colonizer, get out of here. Because the continent of Africa does not need the world. The world needs the continent of Africa, which I said is not really the continent of Africa, it's the kingdoms that must get back to that thing again and stop saying Africa, Africa, Africa. They're not from Italy. Yeah. And so, after that has been done, okay, they can kick out the colonizer. I heard that in South Africa, the apartheid regime had committed crimes against humanity in South Africa during the war, the civil wars. As I said, the war is not merciful. So South Africa should do should get into another war in this time in order to win, not to lose. So all the strategies must be so good that this time the kingdoms in that so-called Republic of South Africa should wait to fight a winning war this time. Yes, if they have to do it. So it is not about them negotiating and demonstrating in the street. No. It's about them controlling, telling, not saying, if you will. Ah. So then I heard that the Clark, one of those in the regime, because there are also many people in the regime who are still living in South Africa. I don't know why they're still living in South Africa when South Africa has moved to full democracy. They're not even respecting their thing which they have created called democracy. That according to democracy, if you are a tyrant, if you are a dictator or you are a regime, you should be removed so that you can give way to a transition. Yes. And so this has not even happened in the democratic setup. Not to mention the kingdoms. Yes. And so they should have said to the regime, you have no business here. Get out. They say, I'm a South African. Look, we are not here to open argument. Whatever position that you had before we took over is no longer recognized. Then South Africans' kingdoms should say, there is no constitution until we establish one. There is no school system until we establish one. There is no judiciary until we establish one. We are not building on the foundation of the apartheid regime. So anyone that was associated with the apartheid regime must leave the country unconditionally. There will be a backlash from America. America will impose sanctions. Ah, it's the other way around. You impose sanctions on America. Remember when I said in the beginning, you have everything they need and they don't have everything for you. So I hear that Zimbabwe is, is now being sanctioned by the United States and then people say, oh, it's because of you, the way you speak, you, Mugabe, you spoke like this and your actions were stupid, you're not like Mandela, because you drove these people out. You shouldn't have done that, please. I know that it's not their land, but you should have been very nice and compromising so that it doesn't get too bad. <laughs> it is bad, but maybe you can live with this. Yeah, but if you you say this belongs to me, I'm taking it back and taking it, then it will be worse than ever. So better not do that anymore. So which means in other ways the situation is a desperate one. So at least if you can survive. That's what they are saying here. Mugabe, don't speak like that. We, we know you are right, but don't do it because it's going to get worse. That's why Mandela was so afraid to take a firm stand and say, this is my land, get out of it. You don't have no business here. Because 
if he says that things will get worse than they really are, we'd rather have them this, just this bad. Please, just just this bad. So they get too they don't get too bad. Please, just let's keep it here. So which means the situation is a desperate one. <laughs> The first thing he should have done when he got out of prison was to kick them out. Yes. And then if they say, okay, America will impose sanctions on you, we don't care because we're going to hold on to the resources that the world is getting from us. And then we'll see if they can share the little percentage that is remaining. Like, for example, if we have 90% of diamond from the so-called continent of Africa, and then we have a cooperation between the kingdom through a forum of understanding from the leadership, the proper leadership, not the agent of the Republic of the, or whatever, the right people being representative of their territory. And then you hold on. If you have 90% of diamond in the world, for example, coming from your kingdoms, you hold on to that so that the world outside this area could try to share the remaining 10%. And it will be difficult for them. So who is in control and who is not in control here? So they're speaking as if they're asking somebody to be nice. Ah. They should command and say, we want you to do this. We want you to get out of here. We want you to go there. We want you to move like this. We are in control. We don't stage protests. Someone comes and robs me and breaks into my house. I don't go to the street and stage a protest. No. I get them out. Yes. I cannot have someone breaking into my house and then I leave my house on the back door and then go in and take a play card in the street and say, I am demonstrating against people who break into other people's homes. Oh. As the owner of the house, I should control, tell the person not to do that. If I have the ownership, I am going to tell not to negotiate with them, not to go to an election to tell whether I can take them in or not. No, 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 no. No, no, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. So the Clark said, apartheid is not a crime against humanity. He said that statement, that very appalling statement. He could afford to do that. You know why he could afford to do that? First, he was not kicked out of South Africa. Big mistake. Secondly, the regime that was controlling South Africa has never gone away. He's still controlling South Africa. He's still remote controlling. Three, he takes advantage of his physical presence there. So if they had kicked him out, he wouldn't do that because he will not be in that country physically. Yeah. So as soon as he said that, they should have kicked him out. Not to say, not the words really, the actions that came before these words were spoken. The acts of genocide of the regime should have disqualified him from living in South Africa. So he shouldn't be there. So as soon as Mandela comes in, he should have said, you declare you shouldn't be here. You should get out of here. And your people who support your apartheid regime ideas. Oh, we the United Nations say that that is against humanity, blah, 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 blah. Okay, if you say that, I will just... Put, keep the borders of the so-called African Africa, and then I will not be open to you all. I will just trade within ourselves. Yes. And see if you can share the last 5% of what we have. We have 90% production of something. South Africa has 75% produ production of platinum in the world. So if we can put that 75% with another country, or another kingdom, it could go up to 90 or even 80. So the world will have to share the little remaining 
And they cannot, they cannot be satisfied with that. Yes. So you can control them. So I don't understand why the people are saying, Mugabe, you should not have spoken like this. Look where we are now. Instead of saying to Mugabe, Mugabe, we are going to join with you to show you that these sanctions mean nothing to you. Because we have everything that the world is looking for. And if you hold off what we have in so-called continent of Africa, the rest of the people will not be able to have enough for themselves. So they will have to come to us and say, can you please open up? And then we set the rules. We set the rules. This is what we want you to do. Behave like this. Commanding them. Yeah. Not, oh, can we negotiate? Can we have an election? Can we have uh, the United Nations Security Council? No. No. The Kingdoms Forum. Those kingdoms will have their identity and they will be feeling stronger and powerful and more civilized. They will tackle all these enemies and these aggressors coming in to take from them. So my people, you're not Africans. You're not from Italy. Stop the Africa dogma. Stop the Republic dogma. Stop the President dogma. Stop the Democracy dogma. Come back to the customs and traditions of your nation. This is King Binyam Solomon of Lember, Better Israel speaking. Salam, salam, my people.